What's going on all you gamers? Here we are, back with some Outriders. And the servers have been a lot better lately, well, I say lately, for today at least, and I've been able to kind of make my way up the levels, and I've hit tier 15. So what I'm going to do is give you a little pyromancer guide, and show you what I think will probably be the best way for you to kind of grind up those levels and make it all the way up to tier 15. So if you're struggling with pyromancer, and you want to make your way up those tier levels for the expedition, then stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox, and of course a lot more of the latest and greatest, and a lot more Outriders on the way, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. But for today I'm going to show you a quick guide on the build as such for the Pyromancer that I've been using, how you can use it to your advantage and go up those tier levels really easy in the expeditions, and how it will kind of go in your favour and be nice and easy compared to some of the other builds, or just not knowing exactly what to do. So, as you can see, he doesn't look that pretty. That's because I've just chucked on anything just to kind of put the mods in the right place. Now, if I quickly show you what he's got on, basically, one of the main things that you'll want to use will be something with a really large mag. So I've just chucked on this, which is the light machine gun. And LMG works absolutely perfect in this build. It's a little bit spray and pray, but it works absolutely amazing. I would say if you can get over 100 clip size, definitely do that. But at least if you've got 100, you should still be fine. Now, as you can see, the two mods that I've got on it, and this one is important, but it's not 100% important. So if you haven't got it, then don't worry, and I will show you how to get it. Basically, Ultimate Ashen Bullets. So this one inflicts ash on enemies. And once I go through the skill tree, it kind of become evident why you're gonna want that and how it would definitely, definitely help you to progress up those tier levels really, really fast. Now, just down the bottom here, and we've got death chains. The reason that I've picked this is because uh, this basically come with this gun. It's why I chose it. So make sure you find an LMG with this on when it drops, and then obviously chuck a mod on the top slot but death chains is really really strong it's one of the better mods it deals a ton of damage an absolute load of damage it really does there are a few ones out there that kind of contend with it some of the tier 3 ones are really good but i would say this one is one of the better ones in the game if you want to swap it out you very well can do but i would say try to find one with this on or another really high damage one and then swap in the ultimate ash bullets up the top if you can if you cannot put the ash bullets in, don't worry, it's not the be all and end all, but you will lose out on a little bit of damage and you will lose out on a lot of kind of CC as such. But don't worry, if you haven't got these yet, you can save up for them because they're actually in the store at the moment. So if you go to your main guy in the camp, it will cost you a bit of money. Obviously, the lower they are, the cheaper it will be for you, and it will cost kind of drop pod resources, which is what you get for basically doing the expeditions as such. But if you have a little look, you can buy the Wicker. Once you deconstruct this, you will be able to get that tier three mod, which gives you Ash and Bullets, and I highly recommend you put it on, especially for leveling and maybe beyond. Now, in all honesty, put whatever you want in these two bottom ones, as you're not gonna be changing off of your top slot. If you manage to find a really nice legendary LMG, I myself haven't yet, not one that I'd actually use, so if you do, you may well be able to chuck Ashen Bullets on that or something else and may work it to your advantage, but I've had to stick with the purple one for the time being. Now, the main thing you're going to want to do is mainly spec into firepower. You won't have to go all the way. You don't need as much as some of the other builds, but firepower does definitely help with this build. So try to get as much on as possible. And with this one, we've got bonus firepower, close range damage and skilled life leech. All of them are fine. Honestly, go with whatever you can get. It's not going to be the be all and end all as such. The main thing will be the mods. And what I've chosen to put on this one is Ashen Boost and Bloodlust. As you can see, Ashen Boost is going to be giving you that extra 20% damage against every single enemy that has Ash on them. You will be hitting a lot of people with Ash, almost all of them, especially if you put Ash and Bullets on, then you'll definitely be getting that 20% at all times. And just down here, as you can see, the mod that I've got here is Overheat. Increases weapon damage against enemies damaged by the skill by 30% for 5 seconds. 
Now, the reason for that is because obviously, one, we have overheat, as you can tell. That, that obviously helps us out a lot because we're going to be getting that weapon damage against everyone. And it's just going to boost us quite a lot. Now, I've put this one on. You do not have to have it in your build. I was just testing it out, but I actually quite like it. And that's twice as hot. Whenever a skill is used, inflict an extra 39,901 damage to all enemies afflicted with burn. Basically, what you're going to want to do is spray and pray. Make sure you hit every ad you can as you're going and basically then apply this. So click that button in and you will get 39,901 for every single person that you've hit and inflicted with burn, which will be all of them. But like I said, if you did want to swap this one out for something else that you like, you very well can. I've only swapped this one in recently. Now, next up, and this is really important actually. Now, obviously here we've got Anomaly, Long Range and Cooldown Reduction. With this build, try to fit in some cooldown reduction. The better the cooldown reduction, the better it will be for the build and you'll make it a lot more survivable. Like I said, it's got anomaly power. That's probably not ideal, which kind of hasn't worked out exactly as I was going yet, to be perfectly honest. So probably if you can, just chuck it into firepower. But the main thing you're going to want just down here, I've got the tier 3 mod one, which is a flame grasper, feed the flames, enable absorption of two additional targets. Now, the reason for that is literally because of the one beneath it, bullet absorption. Feed the Flames replenishes 33% of ammo in your magazine for every enemy affected by the skill. This one is absolutely essential in this build. Just because it's a tier 1, don't look down on it, you're going to need this. This is going to be the main bread and butter of your build and keeping it with that high DPS and mowing through those tiers. Now obviously this one is a tier 3 mod. Don't worry too much, if you can't get Flame Grasper, which I got off of a legendary set piece of armor, then just get the tier 1 one, which will give you an extra 1. That will still be good enough, just make sure you're hitting both targets at the same time, and you'll replen your ammo, and you'll get 66% back. You should be fine, as long as you've got enough cooldown in your build. Next up, and I've got these, which are legendary Gauntlets of the Cannonball. Obviously, I've chucked these on just because they had Captain Hunter on it, increases your damage against elites by 25%. If you've taken that mod off and you want to chuck it onto something else that is just as good, just make sure you've got a nice bit of damage coming from some of these items so that you can clear those waves of, waves of enemies and make your way up the ranks, making sure you're getting your tier level up in expeditions. So like I said, the tier 3 mod is Captain Hunter, increases your damage against elites by 25%. If you can't get that, chuck on anything that will give you the additional damage that you need. There's quite a few in the tier 2 mods, just have a little look and decide which one you think is working best in your favour, or which one seems to make you clear the waves of enemies faster. And down the bottom here is Bullet Kindling, deals 20% more damage against enemies afflicted by burn. Again, like I said, everything is going to be constantly on fire. You are not going to worry about them at all. You will have that and you'll have the Ash One up at all times if you manage to put that Ash One on your actual gun. Finally, just down here, and this one's a bit of survivability. By a bit, I actually mean quite a ton of survivability. This has kept me in the game more times than I can actually tell you. And that one is Emergency Stance. Now, this mod is really, really good. Attain Golem Protective Effect for 4 seconds, whenever your health drops below 30%. Now, I'm not sure if it's changed at all. If I remember correctly from the demo, I think it was 65% damage mitigation. I don't know if it's altered, because they have kind of had a little muck around with some of the stats and stuff, but I know this definitely saves you, and it gives you the chance to get into cover, or kind of leg it around the corner, just to make sure that you kind of survive as such. And up the top we've got Damage Absorber, increases your armour by 52,659 and resistance by 10%. That can really, really help you and if you have a look at this top right, I've got 102,000 armour, which is absolutely massive. You may not even need that much, but I found it's really helped me to progress up the world tiers and to kind of hit that tier 15 mark. So it's 66% physical damage reduction really nice it just makes your build more viable more tanky and you're just not going to fall over as much late game if you're struggling to kill things or get the times you need swap this out for another damage mod very possibly from the tier 2 list or if you've got something nice in the tier 3 list go and grab one of those 
So for the skills, these I have found hands down work best for this build. You may well be able to swap a few out late late game or once you've kind of found your playstyle, but for leveling up, these seem to be really, really handy and just clear everything and give you a lot of survivability. Now, just over here, we've got Feed the Flames. Select and pull an enemy towards you, dealing 19,877 damage, draining 19,877 health. So basically you drain exactly what the damage is, up or down, depending on how much actually anomaly you've got in your build, and inflicting ash. And that's the big thing again. The pull towards you, they're inflicted by ash, you get the damage about them as well. Trust me, this is a great move to have, especially when I show you the build afterwards. And just in the middle here, and like I said, this one is definitely, definitely the main one you need, Volcanic Rands. This one will absolutely melt enemies like butter. So fill your current weapons magazine with bullets that will ignite the air around enemies and inflict burn onto them, even if the bullet misses. So basically you get like a little, or from what I can tell, you get like a little vicinity around the actual bullet, like as if the air is heated around it and that still hits them and causes them to burn but if the bullet hits it causes skill damage ignoring armor and piercing the target it also damages others behind them the skill lasts until you reload or switch weapons now how this is supposed to work is basically supposed to be you're getting it for a short time you do an abundance of damage and then it's on quite a high cooldown don't worry we've got a way around that and it will definitely definitely have a it will definitely be a lot of fun when you're using it. And finally, and this is one of my favorite moves in the game, you can put this into so many builds, it works with almost everything. The Pyromancer does because he pretty much makes sure everything is on fire 9 out of 10 times, and that's Overheat. Deals 2783 damage to all enemies within a large radius, and interrupts their skills. So obviously this is your interrupt for bosses and whatever you need to kind of knock things out of their skill, and enemies afflicted with burn receive 35,778 damage. Now again, that will go up, it will go down, it depends how much anomaly you've got in your actual kind of build, don't worry about the numbers, you can sort that to your own playstyle. And here we have the skill tree. Now, if you don't know, with the Pyromancer, basically his healing mechanic, make sure that you're killing things and actually doing that when they are marked. If they're not marked by your skills as such, then you're going to be kind of getting nothing back from it. So you're going to want to make sure that at all times and they're marked when you're getting that kill. Obviously, from your Volcanic Rands, you're going to be getting that anyway, so don't worry too much. So the way I've gone is just up here, and that's Inferno Weapon. Increases your weapon damage by 8%. Just here, and we've got a cooldown reduction. You're going to want to put as much cooldown reduction in this build as you can. That is really key, and it will help you survive. Just up here, and we've got increased weapon damage by 10% against marked enemies. No need to tell you why that's good. Extra damage is always a must. Just up here, and you've got Assault Master. You're going to be using that LMG, it comes under the Assault Weapon Damage category, you're going to be getting an extra 20% out of your weapon damage because you're using that, or any of the guns listed down the bottom here. So, Assault Rifle, Light Machine Gun, Submachine Gun and Double Gun. Next up, and we're going to be coming down to here, Trial of the Ashes. Enemies afflicted with ash receive 10% more damage. Like I said, everything is going to be hit by ash, you're going to want to pick that up. Just over here, increase your weapon damage by 10% against marked enemies. Just over here, the moment burn ends on an enemy inflicts that ash status. This one is really fun to use, really good, and as long as you have that overheat and are using it wisely, you can basically make sure that they're stunned for, I believe it's about 3 seconds, in a big, big group as long as you've applied that burn effect to them. Back just up here and we've got Curse of the Pompeii. Ash affected on enemies lasts 15% longer. Really nice, get a little bit of extra duration out of it. It works really well. Obviously it's not going to be that much, but anytime you can have a little bit of extra CC in this build, especially for leveling or late game if you're finding it really viable, then this will definitely help. Just over here, increase your weapon damage by 10% against marked enemies. Again, we're picking up all of those, 8%, 10% and 
and then we're going to go down to here. Every time Ash is afflicted on an enemy, vulnerable status is inflicted as well. Now vulnerable is one of the best actual kind of statuses to get on the enemies. It means you're going to be doing an extra 25% damage to them. Anytime you can get those big buffs on your damage to people, you'll definitely want it. And vulnerable is one of the best actual kind of I was going to say buffs, debuffs to an enemy that you can actually get on them. Just up here, and we've got Nimble as a flame. Decrease reload time by 20%. You're not going to really worry about that too much. You're going to want to make sure your actual rounds are up constantly. But if you do screw up, then this may well help you to kind of reload a little bit. But then your rounds will be down. So this one doesn't help us, but we do need to get to the end. But this one hurt twice as long, increase damage against and reduce how much they do to you for the elites, 10% for both, really good, you want to be able to kind of dish out that damage especially at late game and not getting hit in the face as quite as hard is always a bonus. Now this one I wish I had enough points for both but I don't, so you can either go down here for the actual reduction on the immobilized skill which would be amazing for a little bit more survivability and inflicting ash but in my eyes this one right here enemies afflicted with ash receive 30% more damage you're going to be doing that constantly 30% more damage is kind of too much to miss and finally on this last one activating immobilized skills increases your weapon damage by 45% for 10 seconds giving yourself a little bit more damage every time you use that is really good and obviously you're going to be getting it after you get your ammo back after you've actually applied that stun to them or ash status and you've got a bit of your health back really nice buffs yourself gives yourself a bit of extra damage and gives yourself back really good note to have in your skill tree now finally i've chucked the last four just down here because i wanted an extra bit of damage and that is anomaly power just down here for the reduction on the actual overheat as such. Anytime you can get that down a little bit, chuck it on. This one again is a little bit of extra anomaly power. Not perfect for this build, but to be perfectly honest, it's always good to have a little bit of viability. And finally, just down here, activate explosive skills increases your weapon damage by 35%. Again, like I said, it's well worth having things like this. Boosts your firepower, makes it nice and easy, and you will just basically melt people like butter. If you're activating this one up here, and then activating this one down here, you're going to be absolutely buffing yourself through the roof, and you're going to absolutely destroy people. Right, all well, you guys and girls, I hope that's helped you. Um, just before I go, I will show you the rotation on this tent right here obviously this one's not an actual enemy but basically you're going to be pressing your lb and rb if that's where you've got it or wherever you put it and that's your volcanic rants you're then going to be taking your shots as much as possible probably not at a tent would be best aim for some enemies get some shots off afflict that ash status because obviously you've got it on your gun and that way you're going to be able to make sure that you're getting all of those buffs and damage and the vulnerable now what you're going to do after that, you're going to make sure that before, and I say before because you definitely have to, so when your ammo is running low, what you're going to want to do is press, in my case, LB, which is feed the flames, which I can't do on anyone because there's not a target here, but you're going to grab an enemy, you're going to get your health back, it's going to give you back your magazine, so it'll be 33% for every enemy, that's why if you can get that one that gives you an extra 2, it's basically 99%, it's really really good, if you're only able to get the extra 1, that will be 66%, still really viable, still able to maintain all of your shots. What you're going to do after that, is either ninja roll backwards or just do whatever you want to do and press rb on my case and that will be your overheat you'll do a bit of damage you're going to absolutely turn everyone to ash they're all going to be vulnerable and obviously you can pick them off as you go because they're all stood still or you could do what i just did and completely botch it because you're now waiting and you've not got your volcanic rounds for quite a duration so like I said, make sure you don't do that. Make sure you're pressing that LB in time to make sure you get your magazine back. 
Right, all you guys and girls, I hope that's helped a few of you out. It definitely helped me to level as such, and I was mucking around with builds for an absolute age, and they were all quite bad i want to say i've got a lot of working out to do in this as there's so many different mods you've got to get not all of them work how you think they will and definitely definitely you can make some absolutely cracking builds so as always for all things gaming for all things xbox take care i'll see you on next day